Good evening, everybody. Um, this is the uh, PB Institute Library's uh, Board of Trustees. Um, this meeting is front page for legal purposes here. Um, this is um, November 15th. It's, the time is 7.02 p.m. Um, remote participation is allowed in accordance with Section 20A, B, and C of the Acts 2021, signed into law by Governor Baker on June 16th, 2021, suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law C-30A, Section 1A. Alternative public access to this meeting will be provided in the following manner. The meeting will be televised via uh, access television. Real-time public comment during the meeting can be addressed to the board. Library trustees utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and make comments or questions to the chair via the audio option. And then there's information here with a uh, active link and also um, information on how to dial in. All right, uh, moving to the agenda. Um, I want to call to order roll call, please. Roll call. Rick Schumann? Here. Jeff Schumann? Here. Jeff Present. Here. Here. And Tim O'Brien and Morgan. Okay, they haven't been sworn in yet. Oh, They're okay. visiting. So for, for now, they're electees, <laughs> uh, trustee electees. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll be, uh, I guess, a, a public technically today. Welcome. <laughs> And then Catherine, our our is here too. All right. So, is there anyone anyone via Zoom? No, no. Thank no. you for asking that. And so, so, okay, you can see that. Good. All right. Um, do I have an approval um, of the minutes? Do I have a motion, please? Motion to accept the second. Minutes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, uh, <laughs> I know. Um, I just wonder. I have to have a question. I found in the um, which one are you on? September thirteenth minute, minutes. Um, we're we're looking at approval of, of the um minutes from the previous meeting. That's right. Thank you. And I, my question is, how carefully do the trustees? read these minutes, the draft when they come through because there's one obvious very simple this is september 13th yeah. it is very clear typo that i missed i saw and i just wonder if anybody else saw it which to me indicates how carefully do people read these minutes when they come through as drafts? So I think in all fairness, and if we're checking something for accuracy and for details, um, if the, the fact that we have to check for it and we do catch things, it's uh, my experience and what we see in my industry is that you will miss things when you look for them. So I think in all yeah, fairness, this, you can't this seem to be was so obvious that if nobody else except me found it, then for goodness sakes, how careful do people read these minutes? Can, can you and share what you found, Dan? All right. On um, page two, under Audubon, it says, and it's a typo. I mean, it's not a m significant thing, but it's just a little typo. And it has, it has as directory Merlin. And then again, on page three, I guess it is, again, the directory. Now, this is a typo, but I think about the minutes as a record of what we do that is the future, 50, 100 years from now, people are going to be looking at these 
but and, about this institution. And I've, I know I've said this before, but legally, if it doesn't change the content or the intent, it, it's still legal. That doesn't make it illegal. No, that's true. But, but and, it's, and, it's uh, what it says. No, I it says something you. about the quality of what we do. Sure. And I told you. Oh, yeah. I told you. I would just about um, these minutes. I appreciate that you're a new picker. I do, but when I look at these, I truly scan because I recall the topic that we were discussing and I, I scan through it. I don't read it slowly as if I'm reading a novel and read it blind. Okay, okay. So I, I scan, I'm a scanner and I, I, I read very quickly. So I'm going to miss a little. Okay, because that's how I am and that's how I prefer. It. I read so, it. Right. I read it as an editor. And if you look at these things, you see all these. Red marks over, over these whole yeah. things, and you see every single so, thing. And, you just and I thought inconsistencies. Can, can, can we have just something? a list of the typos? Can you go through them, and then we'll, we'll um, accept these as no. amended? Thank you. Okay, well, just leave it to her. Just go ahead or down you, the yeah, list. Or if you want to give her your copy for her to amend it. Right. Okay. Yeah, I would do that. Okay. I would. I would like to. I would like to do that. To work with, with Sarah, Sarah, to just kind of clean these things up. Okay, so so um, no but, vote on this then. No, there can be a vote. There can be a vote right. as. Wait, a minute. I have another question. I just have a question. When there is a motion, and this has nothing to do with the minutes, but is a motion to x x x x x, and there's no name there. But then there's a name that seconds the motion. Yeah, no, I got to no, agree with the one, no. that one. Well, so these, what do we these do? September 13 minutes, um, Trustee Gallucci took these notes right. and then passed them on to Sarah. I passed them on to me and then I passed them on to Sarah. So I think something maybe in France notes were pretty brief. So I think anything that's missing, it maybe was lost in translation or just missed in the taking of the notes. So it was just a one-time thing. Yeah. We're not going to worry about it in the future. Okay. Okay. So, Anne, what would you like to do? Would you like to just hand these notes over, these minutes over to get revised? Well, I'll work. Have all the well, I'll, work, I'll work with Sarah. Um, but you, you can't. Well, no, what you I can't. Would like to you do, can't do that. No, what I would like to do is give her your yours and make a motion that we accept the minutes as amended by the corrections. No, I, I, I don't think you we should do that. that. No, okay. I think that they should be corrected so we know what we're approving. Um, oh, okay. I got to agree with if that. If we went through the list of typos tonight, we can see. No, the, yeah. they're not just typos. It's, it's more to it's, it. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's more to right. Can we move on with this then? Mm -hmm. um, All right. You know that I'm, I'm... Some of these things will probably change by autocorrect. Hmm. It, you know what I mean is sure. Yeah, it's changed by autocorrect so the tense of something. There was enough hands in these yeah. minutes. They were late um, because there was um, a little bit of confusion last time they were taken, and and and, and um, our secretary was able to make something of them. If, mm -hmm. if there be some corrections, if these were a bit challenging this month, and let them be corrected. Let them come back here, and we'll make a motion to receive them. Fair enough. But she's going to have to give them to her so she can correct them, give them back to Anne. Well, I will work. I'll work with Sarah. Oh, I'll work with Sarah. It's, it's no difference is Sarah. the minutes okay. being out there. And it's it's, okay. As far as I understand, it's most appropriate if I have work with Sarah. So I'll, mm -hmm. we'll work together and we'll edit it. Right. Those are the we'll, September minutes, right? Yep. And we'll right. look at the October minutes as well. I'm not sure. Is there such a thing? So when you send them out on Thursday, mm -hmm. can we do these corrections ahead of time? Can Anne email and say, I'm going to Sure, can. So, Anne, oh. so if you have, if you're so inclined to read them ahead of time and you find those things, you could kind of just shoot an email to Kate and to Sarah and say, I noticed this, this, and this, and then maybe once we present and come and sit down, we're not kind of getting hung up. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. Issue. That's right. That's right. I wish. I wish there was an opportunity. I mean, that may work. Just you know, just so clear. Make sure you highlight like yellow or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Have a red pen. Get yeah. our editor. Yeah, All right. Just send it <laughs> Uh, October right. minutes. Right. I have a motion to receive the October minutes. Thank you for the discussion. As a, yeah. Oh, okay. second. You You're first. I, I made the motion. And then second for the October minutes. Second. Gone. 
And discussion on the October minutes. That's uh, okay. If I, if I may just say something. Um, and please go ahead. Some of the things that, that was, as I read these, it was like I didn't understand. And just a change of language and would clarify. So me, at least. So since there is new, I'm happy to I understand that. So I don't feel that we need to have a further discussion now. I, I agree with that. No, so, so, so that's, get that's what I'll say. It, so I'll, I'll work with Sarah. All right. So we're not going to receive these. It, no, it's, it's, no, you're working with Kate. You're, you're, yeah. you're not supposed to work directly. Yes, with I'll Sarah. work with Sarah. I'll work with Sarah on this. Sarah, I just scanned these. I, I thought. They were good. I didn't catch the details that and you're like an engineer and pick up on these details. So I'm like stepping I'm just reading it's impressive. Well, so. content. All right. So um let's hold off on these until next month and then we can vote them in. Thank you, Ann. Anything else from anyone else on the board here? All right. September and October. All right, um, next agenda item, number three. Um, any communications, Kate? No. No communications. Um, let's move on to um, the library director. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Actually, did you want a copy as well of all the, and as I have, I do have extra files. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, director's report to the Board of Library Trustees, November 2021. Um, staffing, longtime aide Jeremy Melle has accepted a full time position at the Abbott Library in Marblehead and resigned last month. His position was filled by Lauren Trider. The facilities department and HR will hopefully move forward soon with interviews to fill the vacant custodian position. We are thankful for the help from the facilities department's full custodians who have filled an extra shift and in the branches on a regular schedule. All three library locations will close at 5 p.m. on Wednesday the 24th and remain closed on Thursday the 25th and Friday the 26th for Thanksgiving. And they will all reopen for normal hours on Saturday the 27th at 9 a.m. Programs and initiatives. A new start November featuring the official announcement of the elimination of overdue fines and the one-time full amnesty of existing fees and fines began on November 1st. The patient response has been remarkably positive and the mayor was also thrilled and shared the information via his Facebook and Twitter accounts. I spoke with a reporter from the Salem News Peabody Magazine this afternoon and he will be publishing a story about new start November in the upcoming issue and hopes that he can also publish a story in the newspaper soon as well. Uh, In-person English conversation circles and Creativity Lab open labs have resumed. The Sutton Room is now available for appointment-based research and open hours will begin in January. Children's programming has been moved inside to the second floor tech lab where there is greater airflow and space for social distancing and masks are still required for all pa for patrons and staff at all times. Senior librarians Gabriella Toth and Catherine Vidal, sorry, I told your name. Um, we'll submit a grant application to the Massachusetts Cultural Council tomorrow to request funding that will be used for a community read project in which patrons of all ages, ethnicities, and genders can come together to discuss and interact with books and media that illustrate themes of migration, community, home, and history. The year-long initiative will center on the memoir, We Share the Same Sky, a memoir of memory and migration by Rachel Cerati, which tells the story of the gripping and deeply moving debut account of her late Jewish grandmother's experience growing up in Nazi-occupied territory during World War II. Um, and the South Branch Library is holding a coloring contest for children ages 12 and under from now until December 9th. And an art exhibit by local artist Sheila Farron Billings will be displayed until December 27th. Uh, partnerships. Senior teen librarian Joanna Correa visited the Higgins Middle School last month where she checked out 172 books to students and created 93 new library cards. The library will participate in Peabody City Hall and Peabody Main Street's holiday stroll on Saturday the 27th, featuring a blow-up snowman selfie station in the courtyard and story times with Mr. and Mrs. Claus in the teen room. And in January, the library will host the Peabody Veterans Memorial High's Winter Art Show for all first semester art students. Works of art will be displayed in the Sutton Room, Tech Lab Hallway, and Main Reading Room for an opening night reception on Friday, January 14th. 
It will be catered by Peabody High's culinary arts department students. The art will remain on display in the Sutton Room and Tech Lab for one week and will bring students and parents into the main library to view their work in this beautiful and historical setting. And this from now on will be a twice yearly tradition going forward with the spring semester's reception taking place in early May. Um, technology. Noble has received grant funds from the Essex County Community Foundation to upgrade the internet speeds of its libraries in Gateway Cities, it's PBD Salem and Lynn, to one gigabyte. And this upgrade will take place next week with no charge to us. This only applies to the main library due to downtown Peabody's demographics. Um, in Visionware, mobile print services were, were installed last Friday. Anyone with internet access can send their documents and images to the library's printers from anywhere, via an app or website, whether at home or in the library, from their computers or phones, and then come to the library to release their print jobs. A print job stays in the queue for 24 hours, after which the system removes it, and more information and instructions will be provided in our buildings and on our website soon. 20 Chromebooks purchased with this past spring state earmark funds, 10 for in-library use for three hours, 10 for outside circulation for two weeks will begin circulating this week. As with all materials, no overdue fines will be charged, but Chromebooks will be marked as lost and fully billed after they are two weeks overdue. And photo and document scanning is now available at the South Branch and will be available at the West Branch beginning next week. Um, budget, I've included the budget through the end of October. Nothing is of concern or of notes. Our MBLC certification will be voted on and part of a large group at the December 2nd meeting of the Board of Library Commercial Commissioners. And I will update the board as soon as that takes place. Um, Audubon's. So at the October meeting, I mentioned that the city's insurance policy needed to be updated to cover the Audubon prints during conservation off library property. The city ended up meeting with an entirely separate fine arts policy to cover the Audubon, as well as a large portrait of George Peabody in the lobby and the four Grupp paintings in the main reading room. I have received the application from the insurance company and will submit the library's application, just information about our premises and security systems and Studio TKM's application, same information this week. The city will be paying for this policy given that they always have in the past. Uh, city Auditor Mary Martin and I have worked together on this and I greatly appreciate her expertise. We also discussed the need for a full appraisal of all of our art, artifacts and archival collections and we both agree that this is necessary as former director Martha Holden does not believe this has occurred since at least the 1980s and no documents seem to remain other than the values on the previous finance policy. I will keep the board updated as this and the insurance policy move forward and then per the insurance agent who has access to a previous finance policy, the 432 Audubons are each currently valued at $3,448 each for a total insurable value of about 1.5 million. As of today, the library, with the incredibly generous support of the Sawitsky Trust Foundation and State Aid Funds, has conserved 311 of 432 prints, 72 percent done, with an approximate cost of $1,000 to $1,500 per print based on condition. At least $300,000 has been put towards this project, with an estimated $120,000 in costs remaining. The Audubons are conserved in order of their plate numbers, not based on level of damage, so these costs are approximate, approximate based on previous costs. Hmm. I was surprised also. <laughs> um, building and grounds, the elevator is operable. The valve and oil have been replaced and staff and patrons alike are relieved and reassured for now. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I know, right? Give it a couple hours. Um, as of the printing of this document, um, during our last major storm, the flat roofs of both the main library and West Branch leak due to wind pushing water up and under flashing and roof tiles. The facilities department sent roofers to examine both roofs and flashing has been repaired. Um, the West Branch roof unfortunately leaks frequently, so it will likely need to be fully replaced in the near future via a, capital, a city capital request. And then Tomatoes Landscaping performed their fall cleanup of all three properties today. Um, policy, so Senior History Librarian Catherine Vidal um, has a presentation for us after this. And part of that is a revision of the usage policy for doing research in the Sutton Room. Um, and then we'll request your approval of this change this evening. Um, Sutton Room. So, as I mentioned, Senior Law School Chemistry Librarian Catherine Bidal has prepared a presentation for the board, culminating in a request for the approval that funds from the Brattle Books Trust be spent towards the upkeep of the Sutton Room, as well as new display and research furniture to enable our local history collection to be correctly preserved and shared with the community. As a member, the Brattle Books Trust was created in 2018 with the proceeds from the sale of antique books from the Sutton Room collection. The initial balance of the trust was $125,000 and the current balance of the trust, including interest, is $135,000, $135,158.02. 
Below is the original motion information from February 5th, 2018. Um, motion was made by Richard Shruhan to accept a bid offered by Brattle Books and GS McManus in the amount of 125,000 and place these funds in a restricted account to be used for acquisitions, preservation or restoration projects associated with the Sutton Room and Local History Department. Um, and the motion was seconded by Don McAllister and to vote in favor, nine opposed, zero. Um, senior librarian Vidal is excited to share her work and plans for the Sutton Room and the local history collection will be this evening. We can either segue directly into her or I can ask a question first. I have a question. Yes, sir. Then we can segue. Yeah. Right. So the question I have is, yes. um, when they print from home or outside yeah. or anywhere, I'm sure they have to use their library card to log in. And then when they come here, do they use their library card? It's actually not tied to library card at all. No? Um, it's tied, I, can, I can't put it up on my computer because I have to fiddle that around. But basically there's an app or a website and you just log in, you, you just put in your name and your email address. Um, so when they come here, that's yeah. all they have to do to yep. get it. When they come here, they basically, it's, it's really nice. I practiced it today. You either have the app or the website, um, and you can choose, you put in your name and your email address, first name, last name, email address, um, and you upload your file, whether it's a, an image from your phone or a PDF from your computer, whatever it is, and you choose which of our three locations to send it to. It's available to Southwest and Maine. You send the file, and then within 24 hours, come to whatever location you chose, and then go to the print release station, like you printed from a computer here, mm -hmm. um, and you type in your name, and up pops your document, the same as if you were printing from a computer on library premises. Is there a limit? So how many they can print? Nope. Then... No. Is there a yeah. cost? Um, there is a cost. Right now, we're still in the midst. This has been a long process. We upgraded in the summer to new Gemex machines that accepted not just cash, but also credit card and Android Pay and Apple Pay. Um, and so once that is up and running, it's tied to the same system. So it's the same 15 cents per colored page, I think 35 cents per 15 oh. cents for black oh. and white. Oh, so they're paying. Yeah, it's still, oh, I thought it was a free. No, it's okay. the normal printing service. We, okay. during, during when we were shut down, we did a lot of curbside printing. That was a service we offered. People could email us a file. And we would print it and stick it in an envelope and they could come pick it up. Um, so this is kind of, we still have people doing that. And we have to say like, we just don't have the staffing now to check that email address all the time mm -hmm. and run the place. So this is kind of okay. a trade from that. Yeah, I guess I don't understand why anyone with a computer wouldn't have a printer. Um, and most people my age don't have printers at all. And a lot, I, well, <laughs> okay. And a lot of kids as well who are, most kids that are um, in PB school, they all have their own Chromebooks right now. And 99% of their projects are just uploaded, as you can attest to. But every mm -hmm. so often, stuff just have to get printed out. You have to print out boarding passes still. Um, I think that from the people I know, at least printer, we get a lot of people here just using our printers and the fact that they can. And right now we have a service where um, we have an email account tied to our printer downstairs. So if you have a file on your phone or on your laptop, you can email that document as an attachment to the printer. It just, it's kind of cumbersome um, and you have to have the right, it's like a really complicated email address and it works, but it's a slow process. We get a lot of people using that. Sorry. No, we own them. We own all these. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And that'll be at all three branches, and it's really, it's going to be really nice and pretty seamless. So, wow. is there any, um, <laughs> is there a way where we yeah, can wow. share the city's account for, I don't know, copiers and printers? Do we have somebody servicing them? And um, so our copier is, our copiers are serviced through Conica Minolta, and Al, Assistant Director Hayden, spent the better part of the spring negotiating down better contracts for us. Um, so basically, the copier is at the main library. We have one up here that's a staff use one, and one downstairs is for patron use, but staff use it also. And I believe we, I should remember all this, we own one and we rent the other one. And we, and the bill that we paid every month used to be a variable bill because we were out of contract, but she negotiated a fixed cost every month at um, about a four or $5,000 savings every year. And then we have the same things, uh, copy or printer combinations at the branches that we own as well. I, I seem to, I might be remembering it incorrectly, but uh, during the budget meeting in the mayor's office, yep. King Risk there and the company, um, they were talking about, well, we can share um, the city's resources, right, for building yep. and maintenance. And I'm wondering if these printers are something else that can be shared throughout the city under one blanket cost. So the, the, the copiers, we'd have to have our own, I mean, 
I don't know that it would save that much um, because Al's done a really good job negotiating down and we're kind of small potatoes. I'm it out. And the, the printers, we do purchase them. We purchase them through Noble, which gives us a discount. Yep. Um, and that's one of those benefits of Noble that we purchase them. We upgrade them every couple of years. We do get a pretty sizable discount through them. So I'm um, sure you'll figure out what the best thing to do is. Yeah. <laughs> with that, I'm sure. Sorry for oh, no problem. I think it sounds like you don't know what to do. You do, you do. You do. I'm just... We try. <laughs> All right. Can I ask a few questions? Yeah. Um, Last month, I think I mentioned, I asked something about the top field fair. I was really interested in the metrics of how many new library cards we got. Oh, yeah, that seems like so long ago. Hmm. So the top field fair was interesting. It was not, I think that anybody was there can attest to what we thought it was going to be. Um, it was a really useful tool for outreach and simply being there and having people recognize our logo and come up and just chat and ask questions. Um, it was not an appropriate place, I don't think, in hindsight, to try to get people to buy stuff from us. I think that everybody was there had spent so much money to get in with their families, and the last thing they wanted to do was spend more money on something that was not fried food or a ride or something, because it's already so expensive. Um, so I think that, I, I know that I personally, I was there with another foundation member on Saturday morning. We spent the whole time brainstorming how to do it better next year and how to use the, the, the time better. And it, I, I personally definitely want to go back, and I think all of us that did it, want to do it again next year because it was really fun um but i think the the focus next year is going to be on um we our children's librarian here allison bridgewater put and her staff put together probably a hundred little pre-made baggies of crafts for kids like make a turkey make a cob of corn and those went like gangbusters um and people loved walking by and grabbing a free craft for a kid because who doesn't want a free craft for their kid it's a 10 minute project to keep them busy um so I think next year our goal is going to be take a ton of crafts for kids, take pens as freebies because people love freebies, do a raffle of some sort, and then um, have a second table where we basically have a pre-designed mural of the fair of like the hills and you know barns and stuff like that, and encourage families and kids to come and draw themselves and their families having fun at the fair. Then we're going to hang it up here at the main library, so people an excuse to come to the library and see their art on display in the library. Um, so kind of turn the focus from making money to getting the word out there and having people recognize us and giving them a reason to come back to the library. So I, I say that this was kind of proof of concept and a learning experience rather than like a tangible, okay. he made money. I think we made like $70 or something. I mean, it's still that, a but, yeah, I know I was by that too. <laughs> it was mostly us, honestly. But that's okay. My next thing here, uh, bravo, congratulations on, you know, just getting us out there in the news. Thank you for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I called you back up the message. I go, what about publicity? Yeah. You know, and it's like, we did it. we're getting there. And we actually, awesome. we were picked up in a tiny story in the Boston Globe North as well. I think what happened was the day we debuted this, that whole week was overshadowed by local elections. Um, so I think our timing was odd and unlucky, and I didn't—I hadn't even thought about this. It hadn't even occurred to me. But every single article that went out for that week and a half was about the local elections. Um, so I think our timing was odd. But I think now that newspapers are starting to kind of calm down from that, they're reaching out for other stuff. So the Salem News guy—I talked to him for 20 minutes today. Thank you. Um, we're going to be in the next issue of the Peabody Magazine, and he really wants us to be in the Daily as well. Um, and there was confusion about. PVD Library, PVD Institute Library, Danvers, Danvers Library, yep. yep. So we have to figure out how to clarify that. I think the best way to clarify and say, you know, we're in PVD. I think that yeah. they 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 go by Danvers Library a lot. Their website is Danvers Library. Their library cards are Danvers Library. They really try to focus on Danvers as well because I think that they, yeah. I think that they actually have a worse time of it than we do because they have the confusion of PVD and Dan. They have the two cities in their name. Um, I think it was just a fluke that we happened to see more Danvers people there. Well, sure. their location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Th thank you so much for getting us out there. Yeah. Of course. It's a good PR. Mm -hmm. I talked this guy's ear off today. I could hear him typing furiously in the background. So, Well, but didn't we have some technology problems um, in terms of signing people up for cards? Wasn't that an so, issue? Um, we didn't sign we people. We didn't sign people up for cards. No, because we had a glitch with this. No, I think we just we decided not to sign people up because it was not going to be time efficient. Because we would have had to take a laptop and a mobile hotspot, and it was going to be just it just didn't work. Yeah, it's it's not. I don't think it's the place for that. I think true. Yeah, right, true. It's the place for just getting our name out there and giving out free things. That's a good one. Uh, Kate, through the chair. Um, first of all, thank you for your report. Uh, I just said the. Uh, it sounds like the. It's almost a, a better thing 
I think what Tom was addressing, if we had our own printers that we were that we were using here, mm -hmm. rather than jumping on board with the city, is, is was I sensing that you'd rather have that in terms of uh, some of the material? It seems to make make sense. I would I would much rather have our own. That's right. Yes, our own devices. Um, because we can choose what works for us. And part of our contract with Noble also means that we pay an extra fee for um, George. Basically, he's a, a man that works for Noble. He's their tech support guy. Mm -hmm. We pay an extra fee to Noble every year for him to come and service all of our technology. He does all the hooking up of things. And it's tricky with the printers because they have to be able to talk to Envisionware, which is a software that controls our printing, which controls how people log into computers. So it, the, the technology is not just hooking up cords, basically. There's a lot more... Um, like troubleshooting and software that goes into it. And uh, the director is watching this meeting and she just sent me a clarification because I knew I was wrong. She says, uh, we own the copiers at the branches, which is the big copier printer combinations. And then the staff went up here on the second floor at the main and they're under a service contract for all maintenance. And then the new one downstairs is, is the brand new one we have that is, uh, that is under lease. And there used to be a fee every month there's like a maintenance fee and it used to be a variable fee and the prices were up and down based on usage and now it's a fixed fee and it's cheaper than it was before so she did a great job you know, spent a lot of time on you, you you have good grasp of technology here with your staff and al and everybody so yeah we do. i trust that you're making the best operational decision I think, in my mind so you're very satisfied with that company i mean yeah. the way it's yeah. do they do elevators <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, I just wanted to share one thing. I, I still have more questions for you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Me. It's okay. Um, uh, so, great on the Salem News and the publicity. Thank you for that. Um, then, another thing caught my ear about technology um, yep. is one gigabyte um, internet yep. here in the main, but we can't get it in the, um, the west or the south. So, the, the goal is that Noble. Noble is responsible for our internet here. Um, and eventually they will be doing that one gigabyte upgrade to all of the Noble libraries. Yeah. It's just a way to get this funding to pay for us True. and save them from some money. There happened to be this ECCF grant that was for technology. It was during the pandemic for technology in gateway cities. And it just, they kind of figured out a way to have it benefit Noble in the best way it could and it ended up benefiting us. So it'll come to the branches, just- Noble is involved with a lot of our technology. Right? Noble's fabulous. Noble is, by all accounts, the best consortium in all of Massachusetts. And I've worked for two other consortiums and Noble is by far most responsive and smartest and for this to head in terms of trends and technology. And they're actually, we have um, one of their technology trainers coming to our all staff meeting on December 6th to train us. They are always willing to come out and train us and have um, meetings with staff and they're wow. remarkable. And they do this for us and they do things like writing grants on behalf of their libraries to save them money. And then in that term, that saves us money because it costs our contract with them less because they're not paying for these things out of pocket, so. Okay, um, so do you see, if we're seeing issues on December 2nd uh, with their reinstatement. I'm sorry? The, uh, the state grant money. We, we'll be fine. Okay. Um, they don't even, I watched the pre, the, the, basically the way they do it is they split the libraries and I don't, it's not alphabetical. The November one, the November 4th meeting was the first half of the libraries. There seems to be no rhyme or reason how to do it. It's not alphabetical. It's not by town size. It's just, I think kind of a random assortment of half of the libraries. Okay. And the meeting is very basic. They say, you know, let's vote to approve these libraries and they vote. There's no discussion or anything. Um, and then the day or two after that, probably the Monday after that, so December 6th, I'll get the email that says what our initial grant amount is, which is the first half. And then usually the second half that I'll find out about in the spring is a little bit more than that. So I'll have a good idea by the, the sixth or seventh what we're going to get from yeah, there. States running smoothly as far as yep. that goes. Okay, so it'll be probably eighty thousand again next year. And um, I, I watch all the motions. I'm a tiebreaker if it ever rises up to be that uh, for me to do so. So I watch the motions coming in. Can you give us a quick recap on all of the uh, votes that we got for the email for the record? Oh boy! Wow. I'm sorry, do I, I don't mean to put you on the screen. No, you're right. I should have, I should keep track of these. Well, I was just remembering, was it, we were just saying the foundation, the foundation vote on the application. It was a foundation. Yes, yes, that was an application. Oh. That was the approval of the application. Right. That yes. On. So that was yeah. different from library business, right? That was yes, that's why I'm, okay. yeah. And I don't know that we, I don't know that we didn't need trust. See, I didn't get it. But it's been a month and a half, you know, I don't. 
I know. <laughs> didn't see that. Okay, just, just maybe for for future, can we have like a recap on? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, I don't mean to put you on this. No, no problem. It's not. It's my fault for forgetting this. No, no fault oh, here. No, no fault. Do, do, do. They could do it wonderfully. Okay, so I have a November second meal vote. Oh, the one was for um, the approval of PPD Main Street's request to set up the snowman um, yes. blow up selfie station. <laughs> um, that was great. Yeah. Yes. So that was approved. Um, I believe the one time replacement fee we had to do by email because that was October. 20th. Oh, right. That was last minute. Yes. What I can do, I can type up a I apologize. I will type up a comprehensive list and summary of who voted yes and no, and I'll send that around as well. And I can oh, send that okay, to you as well. Yeah. Good. And I'll start doing that. I'll start including that with all of my um, reports as well. And, and sorry for not knowing this, but um, sure. should we be ratifying the, 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 these votes in yeah. this meeting here? Yeah. That's kind of why I'm asking right. the question yeah. is because we're approving things and they need to get ratified for this board. So that's possibly, not a bad idea. Yeah, and possibly the. Um, the extended vacation might have fallen. When was our October meeting again? It was um, October, what was the date? I believe Four? that was the September Four. meeting where we Four. said we gave them the extended Thanksgiving. I think Talk we just, here at the last did meeting. I have? Well, maybe I have that. So Kate sent an email out on October. 7th. Oh, that was for my children's librarian. Right. Four. It was our last meeting, gosh. That's what I have to go. Yep, that was correct as well. Yep, that was the trip to Brazil. Yeah, all the extended yeah, vacation. Yep, yeah, the extended vacation. That made a lot of sense. I that think was, that was the whole thing. It was on the fourth. So then, then all this happened thereafter. Yeah. And then we delayed this meeting in November for now. Right. There was a lot of happenings going on between yeah. October 4th and now. So it's so there's a, three things. Three then. Okay. And I want to make a comment too. I don't know who it is. I really don't care. But somebody's not using their name. Um, it says Russ something. Oh, that's Fran. Fran. And I figured it out finally, but to me, that's on a vote if you don't even use your name. Well, if, if um, you have oh, it in your see. address book, then you'll find out that every time it comes to That's your email address. address. No, I figured it out after I said right. he's not using their name. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. It is a vote. Can we all say, yeah. It's, it's yeah. documented. I wasn't right. worried about it because it, was, it passed, you know. All right, thank you for that, that's, Kate. That's a good and, um, point because if you look us, and you, can, and you um, see accept all that something you don't not recognize. Cool. All right, and on the roofs, um, yeah, I, I have a picture of um, you, Al, me, and Rick on the roof. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, this was actually um, this leak here was. It's never happened Nor before. Yeah, it was from the Norisa. It's never happened before. We were all quite shocked. It was right outside of the third floor elevator, back to the elevator. Um, some tiles fell in, and there was water dripping all the way up from the down from the ceiling. Um, the roofing guys came and basically, it looks like where some of those rubber tiles is not the right word, but you know, membrane. Sure, <laughs> where they meet, they're kind of on top of each other, and water was pushed underneath it. And the roofers, when I understand, were like, "Well, that's kind of a fluke." That's a flashing issue, right? Yeah, and yeah. they repaired it, and it seems to be nothing that's going to cause any. It's not like a chronic. They don't think it's a chronic issue just because of how the wind is blowing that day, but you never know. Well, that sometimes the so. because of the wind too, and the blue gets old. Yeah. So. So they were up there and they're making repairs. The West Branch roof does this all the time. Um, and there were repairs made to it a lot, but it's getting to the point where it can't really be repaired anymore. So it needs to be replaced We've in the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and who pays for the West Branch? Is that the city? That's gonna have to be a city capital request yeah. for next year. And, and when does that happen? Um, that starts to get prepared in like January. Um, and then is negotiated on through the spring. Um, what kind of damage has happened to the West? Not much, honestly. I mean. To me, it's not much given what it could be. Um, some ceiling tiles, some kind of popcorn tiles have gotten wet and fallen in and they've been replaced over the years. How, um, how does it look when a patient walks? Not great, not great. The, the tiles are replaced pretty frequently. Um, and they're expensive. Uh, it's actually, it's through the facilities department these days, so. It's yeah, not, but as a taxpayer, I'm still. Paying. Yes. So. Yes, yeah. but they're not of our they're not out of our budget right, right. now, and it's yeah. it's easier done because it's the city doing. We don't have to bring in a roofer to replace the city tiles; it's just the city maintenance guys. Doing. Okay. Okay. I, get, um, I get the roofing um, 
speaks and, and, mm -hmm. and they get how we have shared resources in the city and we get the city to maintain things for us. Um, and this has needed to be done for a, a while, mm -hmm. right? Um, is in, in refresh my memory, I know there's other priorities that happen, but why aren't we on getting this fixed? We are now. Um, this has been a thing that I think we're all, we forget here too that the last year and a half, nothing really got done at all right. um, because we're, so things that I was think, talking about in the fall of 2019, everything got put on pause for a year and a half. Okay. Um, but now it's on the radar of the facilities department and I talked with them about it and we agree that it's not fixable anymore. So it's time to be replaced. Thank you. I made it clear. Can I make a comment on that? There's two ways to go about that too. To be, as you know, the fiscal year starts July 1st. Mm -hmm. But, and I hate to say it this way, but if there is funds available for that, mm -hmm. you know, when we get into June, maybe they can do it. I've had to do that myself and I've worked yeah. for state and, you know, school districts. So I know how that works too. If they have it, it's been a tight year. That's all I have, Kate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I hate to bring this up again, the elevator, but you, I think you said in the report. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Am I out of turn? You, you may talk about the elevator about two minutes if you want. <laughs> no, I just, I just have a question about the, um, the city. I mean, and you're, you're not having any control over the. Uh, finance, finance mm -hmm. of it, and is that because it's now part of the city facilities? So the the part. process of getting this fixed was faster, I think, than if it had been me talking directly to the facilities department. Um, we used to have our own. We used to be kind of our own little facilities department with our own facilities manager, um, and things did not get fixed a lot under him. And then he was forced out um, and then we became under the city facilities department. I find now, unfortunately, having the guys that work for the facility department able to make these calls for me, they are treated differently than me as the little lady librarian making these calls. Um, so it makes my life easier because stuff gets taken care of faster, oh, honestly. Oh. Um, and budget wise, it doesn't make any difference. The money is still there. It was just shifted to they're paying the bills. When I get the bills, I send them now directly to the finance department at City Hall. Um, I still see them and I know what's being spent, but the money doesn't make any difference. It, I find it easier because when things go wrong now, I can call facilities and they'll send their guys to check a drain or you know fix the roof tile instead of me having to, or before like a plumbing issue, I would have to call a plumber, but now I get the city's plumber to do it. So it's, our gutters are a good example. Our gutters are right? a great example. Um, it's actually made our life here a lot better, I think, because I do have to take that one extra step of telling Jim and Tony hit facilities, but then they take care of it for me. Um, and again, they get a different treatment with a lot of these like contractor guys than I would, unfortunately, but I'm taking advantage of it. <laughs> the bottom line is the facilities department's taking care of it and yep. everybody's saving money. Yeah. Because we use our people first, yep. unless it's too big, then we hire some. Yeah. Instead of just going right to hire it. Yeah. Okay. And the like we we had whenever we have electricity electrician work done, like putting in new outlets and stuff, we used to have to hire an outside electrician, which go out, out of our outside services budget, it would be expensive. But now I tell facilities and they have an electrician who puts us on the list and it doesn't get done quite as quickly, but it gets done at no additional cost because he's already paid. Um and with the elevator thing. That truly was an issue because I saw the emails going back and forth and the calls going forth. That was a supply chain issue of just the valve not getting in here fast enough. It did end up in the end where they, I think, were frustrated that they've been fighting with this elevator for years too. So they would come in and do the work and we wouldn't even know they were here until they left or just show up and then leave without saying anything. So that was a little frustrating, but that I don't think would have been fixed by me being in charge or facilities. But all in all, life has gotten a lot nicer in terms of facility stuff since they took over. Um, because I have people who have my back now, which is, I don't feel like I'm floating <laughs> in the ether, <laughs> hoping that somebody calls me back. They know who to call. They know the right person to call, um, the people to yell at. And we'd rather have you focus on library stuff. That's never going to happen. I'm always going to be all elevators all the time. <laughs> all right. Building that was built in 1854. Right. You're always going to have Let's all building all the time. Have committee reports, everyone. Are you also, Anne, with that question? Yes. yes. All right. And I had, I wanted to clarify one thing. 
Um, I understand now that we've gone to the uh, no fee yes. situation. We do have, we do ask patrons to pay, to pay for lost books. Uh, but it, am I, is my senior memory not remembering correctly, but did we say we were going to look at this again in 90 days? Yes. So I think, okay. All right. I think it's actually going to take longer than 90 days to see the impact of this um, right. because the holidays and Things are strange now. I would like to look at this in the spring Fine. to see the impact of this. And we're also going to be doing some targeted emails and um, figure out how targeted we can specifically get legally to and privacy wise to say like you specifically had fines, you no longer have fines or welcome back. I don't think we can really do that because that's a huge invasion of privacy. Um, but we're looking at ways to reach people and explain this. The problem we always have is the same people that Know about these things the same people that are on our email list do they know about these things because they're on our email list and it's nice but it's kind of a closed group um so the issue mm -hmm. is always how we reach the people who had the books checked them out lost them have never come back they've been uncomfortable or embarrassed and are not on our email lists you know um so we're going to be doing the bill notice with the pvd municipal light plant this thing in the salem news more and more kind of one-off things to get the word out to people that don't get our emails every week and don't come in here all the time um, and don't hear from us all the time. Well, that's a great idea. So it you're is, just yeah. gonna have a flyer and put it in yep. there. As long as people are keeping an eye on it, obviously most of Noble and a lot of the other library consortiums around the, the state are doing this. So I have, I'm not trying to pull anything back, sure. but I would like to know how much of a beating we're taking, if any. So the, the fine, any the, the fine loss. And so right now in Noble, out of all the public libraries, I think there are like 13 public libraries, only five are charging overdue fines right now anymore. Um, so the fine revenue we were taking in every year was always our fines, plus people would have a couple dollars on their account also from like Lynn and Salem, and they would just pay them all off at once. Um, and the idea was that those fines would always kind of even out. Lost book fees would get sent back to the library it was owed to, but overdue fines get paid at the library you're at. And we would take in Lynn fines and keep it. And then somebody would pay Salem fines and Lynn and Lynn would keep it. It all kind of evens out. Our fine revenue has been going down every year as more and more libraries become fine free, especially when um, Danvers went fine free, which was before us. We saw a pretty big dip in our fine revenue right there because people that would come here um, and pay off Danvers and Peabody fines, there's no Danvers money to pay off anymore. So we get less money. Um, so it was going to taper off slowly anyway, even if we can mm -hmm. charging fines, just because of the nature of the beast. And, and we discussed this in a question I had at one of the previous meetings where we did discuss this was, how much does it cost to administer a program like that? And it ended up costing more. Than the mm -hmm. Yep. No, I have no problem with the concept. I just wanted to get a look-see in the spring is fine. Sure. To see if it's any worse, any better, or no different. Just wanted to see how it's working. Support it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for our director? Do I have a motion to receive the director's report? So moved. Ste Second. John, Stephanie, thank you. Okay, uh, <laughs> any, further, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, thank you. All right, reports of the subcommittees. Let's see, the subcommittee here today, building and grounds. Nothing uh, further from the director's report. Auto bonds. Nothing beyond the director. Right. Friends of the Peabody Library. Liaison to the Peabody Historical Society. Okay. Um, liaison to the Peabody Institute Library Foundation. Okay. The last meeting was October 20th. And I'm sorry to say I was not able to attend. I had a conflict I was unable to change. But um, there's a new president, which I believe is Daryl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, treasurer is still Anne Marie Burns. And do we have a secretary for that? Or we don't? We'll just let's do another vote. I think we just do those oh, two. Okay, I, I think it's me. Or secretary. Oh, secretary. Okay, great. Right. Right, very good. Um, Fundraiser wise, we're having a fundraiser. We're selling poinsettia plants for the holidays on December 4th here at the library. Um, from I think 10 to 2 ish, something yep. like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, just shy of an eight inch pot. They're from Kane, so they're nice and 
nice and big, twenty dollars a piece. So we made a motion approved to. Is that official that they're twenty dollars? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a positive. It's a seven and a half inch pot. They sell them odd. It's not an eight inch pot technically. It's seven and a half for and the eight and a half inch pot. Believe it or not, the price jumped too much, and the profit margin wasn't there, so we stuck with the seven and a half inch. Um, yeah, so we'll just be selling those from the library on that day. And we have a meeting of December, I think it's the 15th. The 15th, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Um, to talk about events and um, committee meetings. I, I can get back to you on that date. I have actually I have it in my account. I think it's the first. It's December. Thank you. You're right. You're right. Oh, I had the number five in my brain. It's December first at five thirty. If anyone would like to attend. Thank you. Do you still do it in the trustee room? Mm -hmm. Okay, policy and procedures. <laughs> Is the um Sorry. The sale of Vitamin and the uh, outside. Well, outside. I think it's going to see how the weather is. We can, if we can manage the weather and be outside, great. And if not, we'll do it out in that lobby area, I'm assuming. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the library, yeah. it'll have to be in the teen room, I think, because the lobby area is used these days. Okay. Yeah. It'll be in the teen room, which is easy well, to access, set up. I mean, where that doorway is, that's kind of yeah. easy in and easy out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what about publicity for the. the I'm, hills, I'm right? doing the. On well, my list of things to do is the. Um, Flyer and graphics for this this week. I was waiting I on the pricing. That, was, pricing, so, that yeah. was the thing that was really critical with the sale in the spring. Yep. Um, There's something in our emails right now you're going to see. Okay. Um, with the final yeah. Yeah. I've been waiting on that. Is the yes. one. Yeah. I just saw all yeah. of them. There's like, I had seven. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and the, the, the discussion about um, merging oh, no, or assuming the friends great. and the foundation. Is still, is still going, ongoing. The uh, merger of friends, yes, friends and the foundation. It is an ongoing this process, process, right? It's an ongoing process. Yes, correct. correct. Thank you for that. Anything else for um, foundation? No. Okay. Um, let's see. Public relations. You don't have a public risk. Sorry, I'm reading. No, it's wrong here. Okay. And I think the policies and procedures. Here we go. Not, nothing is policies and procedures. Okay. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to to receive the um, reports of the um, subcommittees? So moved. Second. Thank you, Don. Okay. Stephanie, thank you. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Let's see. Um, unfinished business. Um, unfinished business. Do we have any unfinished business? I, I have some new business. We have to ratify like the, these three. Um, we have to ratify those three online votes. Okay. We, we, will, we, we will do that. Yeah. So uh under un, under unfinished business before you put them out you describe them to us and we have a list of them here tonight and um everybody saw the communication so the the three yeah. um the one-time replacement fee uh for amnesty uh, amnesty um and what's this one here the uh, the snowman in the front uh the street and then the um the staff extended vacation, those were all voted online. Um, I guess they passed unanimously. Um, and how do we ratify a vote here? We motion, yeah, motion to accept all of them at once, Dawn. Is that how this goes? Yes. So yeah. Can I ask for a motion to um, uh, accept all of the online? I make a motion to accept all the online votes and ratify all the votes. Second. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Don. Any um, discussion? Need a second. Um, Don. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Thank you, Don. Sorry. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So I'm finished business. All right. 
I guess we can cover this under. Yeah, I'm going to zero. Yeah, I'm going to zero. And uh, pardon your business. I haven't forgotten everybody here. Um, I'd like to um, welcome library trustee electees, uh, Jennifer Smith and Katrina Vasallo. Welcome. Hey. Thank you for coming this evening. <laughs> um, I also spoke with um, Ruth Teitelbaum, and um, she had other plans this evening, and she's going to be here for next month, she said. So welcome aboard. Nice to have you. Thank you for running. And also, um, And I think under a new business here, um, I think it might be appropriate now to I don't know, I have got this bill, we'll bring that up too. That's something else I want to bring too. Oh, so it's just um, the policy. There's no votes in this. There's the, the Sutton Room policy, which. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get to the Sutton Room policy. <laughs> I, I, I do. So we have a couple of things. Catherine, I want to bring Catherine up to uh, our new business because we want to, that's what we're doing in this room this evening, right? Um, and it's all about Catherine showing us a few things that are happening. Um, so we can do that first. We can have Catherine sure. um, uh, take the floor and, and share with us. And then we can talk about the usage policy too afterwards. Okay. Two items in your business. Catherine, please, welcome. Yeah, somewhere. Wherever you, wherever you're comfortable. Where do you want to stand? I'll. I can. I'll move the webcam around. Here and, um, yeah, that you'd be closer to this. Yeah. Be on camera too. <laughs> Thank you all so much for inviting me to speak you today. It's very exciting. Um, so I've been here um, in two days. It's going to be six months. So very exciting. Um, and just a little bit about me, just to refresh your memory. Um, so I have a background in uh, cultural heritage librarianship, which basically is the, the um, intersection of um, libraries, archives, and museums, and bringing all of those together and focusing on pre preserving and uh, making available, creating access to uh, all of those materials. So, uh, and so the way I saw the local history department's goal is to provide a welcoming environment that encourages patrons to visit the Sutton Room, conduct research, and to build a sense of pride and beauty in our in history through our cultural heritage in the spirit of George Peabody. Um, and that's you know, making sure that materials are preserved as well as displayed and used um, and appreciated through that. Um, and so if residents appreciate their value and they can see that they can interact with it, then they'll want to continue to preserve it. So I see it as a really nice Carmelia cycle. Um, and so in the first six months, um, some of the issues that I've encountered that I've been trying to address um, are really just the result from unintentional but inevitable neglect from a lack of full-time caretaker um, who sees the room in a holistic way and is able to you know, uh, take care of it full-time. Um, so some of the things I've seen include um, lack of a digital asset management policy, um, as well as a lack of a preservation plan. Um, and so I have been working on the, the physical uh, findability in the room, um, 
So if you can see the, the glass shelves, have, uh, the glass uh, locked shelves, uh, I've installed the, the wood so that they're even. Um, I've rearranged the books so that uh, all of our books published before 1905 are in the glass shelves so they're more preserved, um, more secure. Um, and then I'll be moving on to um, focusing on digital asset management. So that's the dig digitization and making that available as well as making sure our data is cohesive and patrons can find what they're looking for. Um, so, um, and so really what I've noticed in, I mean, it's such a beautiful historic room and because there hasn't been someone full time really looking after a cohesive plan um, is that the natural agents of decay in our books uh, have been accelerated by um, things like exposure to light through the windows um, and you know natural dust accumulation. Um, and so what we can do is create a preservation plan um, and invest to make sure that we have these materials for longer. Um, so some of what I wanted to talk about was uh, proposed spending on items that will make sure that we continue to preserve our materials. And I do have some examples that I would love you to take a look at um, in a little bit. So the first thing to mind that's really an immediate need is proper window dressings. Right now, what we have are newspaper. Uh, uh, I don't know what it's called. I mean, it's a it's a film. So we have a newspaper film that blocks some of the UV radiation, but it doesn't block out light completely, and that causes a lot of damage. So even if you just turn to look at that black box on the table, you'll see exactly where the the window was, and then where there was um, I want to say like a ledge that light didn't hit, so you can see the amount of damage that it causes, and that was happening on our book spines and um, the heat and things from that damage also uh, from the light also will damage things inside of boxes and the paper behind the spine. So it's really important. I think the first thing to attend to is to um, get some proper light blocking uh, window dressings. Um, and so I can uh, get an estimate for you of a minimum, as well as something that is maybe more attractive and exciting to look at. So we can, I can get a range and we can see what we would like to see. <coughs> So then the second one will be um, repairing several broken bookshelves because this natural historic, uh, it's historic wood. So um, naturally it will decay, but um, I think some of the more modern uh, way of assembling bookcases will create stronger support. So some of our bookcases um, are bowing under the weight of the books. Um, and so then we have some broken bookshelves because of things like that. So that will need repairing. Um, and then we will also need to refinish the wood, um, which I think has been brought up. Um, I think I, I saw in some notes that previously that was, um, it was an issue that people were aware of. So I know that it's something that people have talked about um, and it's one of the bigger ticket items, but um, it will help in making sure the wood is preserved. So we can put looking for steam um, as well as some of the refinishing uh, will prevent 
some of that off gassing, the, the chemicals of the wood that accelerate the deterioration of books. So it's a few things to think about when we look into um, maintaining and repairing the bookshelves. Um, and after those two, I think those are the main um, items that I'm looking at. And then I will want to look into uh, assessing the HVAC system, maybe looking at repairing or replacing. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it right now. I just know that um, we need to make sure it's uh, maintained at 70%, 70 degrees and 50% relative humidity. So it's something that's um, sort of down the line, but I think can be addressed with um, preservation grants, but that's possible. So that's something I will look into. And then a few purchases that are important for increasing engagement with local history include um, reading room furniture. So some tables that are stable for our you know, sensitive materials, um, a librarian's desk, a fold shelf, a few things like that that make it more like a reading room. Um, and sort of adaptable so we can continue to have programs in it. So it's not just heavy furniture. Um, I think that's important as well. Um, and then an art hanging system. So I know he brought up the uh, displays that we're, we're doing with the schools. Um, so I think that will be a good way to incorporate history and then uh, so with those displays we can uh, do like um, um, we can use those as displays to um, sort of show what we have in our collections and increase engagement that way. Um, and, uh, and then one of our um, final items that we were really looking into is display cases um, for local history materials that are secure, they're museum quality, um, and uh, will you know, increase engagement and interaction with our materials. So, we wanted, of course, the main library to have it in the lobby, uh, as well as the branches. So that's the west and the south, and the senior center and city hall, which the mayor was excited about. So we love to hear that. The, the director of the senior center, Carolyn Wynn, and then um, Mayor Betancourt, I reached out to both of them and said, we want this basically. Do you want? Uh, we'd love to have a rotating collection out in public, not just in the Sutton Room, but at our branches in the lobby, but also at these two other buildings where people just walk through to pay bills or, you know, go to the senior center can look at our collections as well and have her change these out and retain them. Um, and both of them were mayor especially was extremely excited. He said we find a place for it and where the the catalog that Catherine has, they're not cheap, but they're all custom made. And they're beautiful, solid displays. And so we could choose, with the help of mayor and then um, director went at the senior center, um, the displays that are right for those spaces to become permanent um, installation of the two other buildings to get our collection out anymore. So book collections, you mean? Um, book collections. We have other. We have other. No, no, Audubon. I'm, I, not, not Audubon. Audubon. Okay. No, 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 no. okay, not Audubon. But right. mainly books. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And letters. I'm sure and you have all kinds of exactly. documents. Oh, yeah. Right. Exactly. Some of the cool stuff in the vault downstairs. Yeah. Um, but there you can see they're all beautiful and they're all they're all pieces of yeah. art furniture. They're all beautiful pieces of furniture. So um the mayor and I are gonna and Catherine are gonna discuss where in City Hall one of these would fit and where it'd be a good location for it, and then as well as the senior center, and then choose the one that's more appropriate to that setting. Um, do you think um, do you think Deborah Holden would have any connection to getting us a better 
Mm -hmm. she's interested. These are, this I know this is a specialty. Yeah, yeah these I are kind know. of, I mean, I can definitely ask. Tom we can ask her just for the um, These are, as far as I know, these are all custom, right, as well, right? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Well, so all what? These are all custom made, built pieces of furniture. Oh, yes. Um, yes. So I can ask her, but I don't know if there's. Yeah, she may not. Any, it just popped in my, yeah, I can ask them. I, I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind me asking them. So there's, there's the bookshelf, I never really give much thought. Um, but you're talking about how the guessing was split. And I'm just wondering if, if we have these old books on these wooden shelves, and is, is there any chemical interaction between the wood and the acid, whatever comes out of wood? And the old uh, fibers from the book, is there an interaction? And is wood the best material? those shelves? That's a great question. You beat me so, to the punch, Tom. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the, the natural you know, the chemicals in the wood, as well as the, um, you know, the paint or the finishing, um, does off-gas and interact with the natural chemicals in the books um, and accelerates deterioration. So what we have now, which is a great option that a lot of historical libraries and societies use when they have wood shelves like this is to use a chemically inert um, polyester sheet. That's, so it, that was my second question. A lot, <laughs> you know, a lot of the She's good, huh? Where <laughs> hired her. <laughs> that was my second question, because we don't have to use as wood. As well as actually unlocking the cabinet and ensuring the airflow is good. So that's that's something that I try to do when I, you know, come in here and I maybe retrieve one thing. I will unlock the shelf and I will come back and make sure it's locked. The shelves breathe for a while and come back. Yeah. <laughs> to the chair, Catherine. I'm, I'm, I'm still going through a question, but you'll be next on, and then you end to myself first. So, um, so my 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 another question has to do with um, the museum quality cabinets that are going to be around the city. Um, I think I had a. I, I did have this conversation um, years ago um, with Melissa, right? And the previous director. And I said, well, you know, we have some really, and I'm not going to mention what they are here, uh, some really cool things that are locked up. And in order to show these things, you have to have some security. And I was concerned about if we're going to let things, we, you need security within this building, and we're, and we're staffed here, and you can lock rooms up. And, how are we going to ensure that whatever we let out the show is going to be secured? I mean, we had some problems with um, uh, the autobahns leaving well, I can, library, and I know that yeah, was very yeah. super loose. I can guarantee we're not going to let that stuff out. Yeah. Um, that stuff, and that's a debate discussion that Catherine and I have every day of like, just <laughs> the best stuff is in the vault, and yet what can we do with it, right? Other than like, we found a plunder bus a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago and it was very cool and then it went back and fall. You know, um, I think the stuff that we're thinking of is more themed around the location, interesting books that she finds, or like, you know, I'm not a history person, I mean, like an archive person, but we have whole conversations where she's like, look at these books I found that have beautiful end papers, like focusing on a, you know, a topic as a theme for the books and the documents we have in here, or the physical specimen of the book itself, um, and definitely not a really high. The Queen's porcelain. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is going to stay protected forever. And right. that is another conversation of how we get that out into the world. So that, that, that answers my question. The senior center and at the branches are going to be more the books that they're still going to be behind glass, right? We're not going to let people touch them. They're still going to be behind glass. They're going to be next to you know, service desks. They're going to be around people, but books in here that normally you just sit on the shelf and nobody would ever look at. Um, but definitely not the high cost, really amazing stuff. But that, still, they'll be secure enough, but not something yes. that somebody would want to take. So. Yeah. All right. That, those are my two questions. Um, Anne, you had a question, then you don't. Well, I was just thinking and remembering back to my childhood when the Audubon books were just out on the table. And you could come and look at them and turn the pages. And so they talk about, um, I, I have a sense, and maybe I, I'm misinterpreting this, but that there would be more people coming into this room to see what's here. And, and, um, but that and didn't that's, work that's out. It didn't work out. Exactly. Right. And so I'm just wondering about 
what you're thinking is about how to expose the public to more of the materials here and without you know <laughs> doing that awful thing again. But the Audubon's. the Audubon's were stolen because the director was like, here, random person, you can have your own key. I mean, that's yeah. everything that Catherine and I have discussed. I'm sorry, I'm fully talking over you. <laughs> everything that Catherine and I have discussed is right now she's doing appointments with people. Um, if they're just interested in things or, for example, the great, great granddaughter of F.W. F.A. Tilt who's the gentleman who painted the portrait of Queen Victoria downstairs on porcelain, the miniature that was given to George Peabody as a thank you. She contacted the library and said, I'm coming to Boston from London. Can I come see my great, great grandfather's mm -hmm. painting? I've thought about this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. so Catherine arranged and she mm -hmm. and her partner showed up today and I talked to them for a while and she brought a picture of her great, great grandfather and told me a little bit about the history, but it's that kind of stuff that I know Catherine and why we wanted her to work here. She was here today? Yeah, she was here at Route 415 this afternoon. Oh, it was very cool. Did we get anything in the newspaper about it? No, but she's just, <laughs> a, a, just a tourist. Day. It's not, I, yeah, she was just here as a tourist. Um, it's at least a nice story, Kate, and it's better than a nice story. It was very, it was very cool. It's a historical yeah. story, right? Yes, and the, I know that everything Kath and I have talked about is, you know, is starting in January, every other Saturday when she's here doing two hours where the room is open and she's in here working on things and people can come in and look um, and not grab stuff off the shelf, but look at things. And she, the goal is that also she would have this kind of a thing set up with the, the latest interesting things that she found that are not in horrible condition that are able to be touched, um, that people can come and explore and she's there to guide them. Um, this is not, I don't think we've ever talked about letting people roam around yeah. alone in here, mm -hmm. and unlocking cabinets. This is still a, you know, should, no, I would a, a protected know. collection. Yeah. Um, you can go ahead and talk now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just, if anything, I'm a little bit more protective than... Um, yes. <laughs> um, so the idea is really to, you know, have it open, but like have this door open. So people can come in, they can request materials, I can guide them through research. But it's not open for them to wander around, take books off the shelf. Right. It's not like that. It's more like we're here to help them go through. That's I know. I, I just have a question. I've always Let's wondered. Let Don go next. This is just a quickie. <laughs> then go ahead. With all these white things on the bind, binds, and binds, things. What? What's that all about? The box stuff. The white, the white thing. The cream. The fine label? Yeah. The fine label, I guess that's what you call it. Maybe in the middle of books. I mean, what's the deterioration? So the, the fine labels or the boxes? Yeah, the boxes. No, the, 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 the white, white ones. She's asking about the white. That's about the fine labels. Oh, the white things. Yeah. 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 yeah so the, the boxes are usually for materials that are. Um, are falling apart or yeah really it's mostly falling apart okay so what are those white the white things the labels the, the labels on yeah, the labels for the yeah, boxes right what's in there. So, so it's a box yeah. oh it's not a not a book hmm. oh, oh, oh there are books inside the boxes is what she was explaining oh, because they're they're falling apart. It. oh oh i see okay okay Tom, please go ahead thank uh, i am thrilled to know that someone has been uh, delegated <clears throat> on a regular basis to take care of this room. Um, I have history here, and sometimes we'll have to have coffee. We'll have a nice chat about it. But um, the room looks so much better than it used to, believe me. Uh, Already. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the things that are happening. Um, these, and I wasn't quite sure if I heard exactly. You're talking about in the vestibule of, of the South and, and, and the West uh, having. Uh, a, a, some of some of these cabinets, so to speak, to uh, show some of our goods to, to let people see it, and perhaps we're talking about that in for the second room as well, but just leaving it as, as it is. I mean, can't, some of the stuff that we were talking about that you can't, about, but the people can't see, and if there were somewhat similar cabinets to this or display cases, would you talking about that here as well? In the Sutton room? I think the idea for the Sutton room is to still have it be like a, a multi-use space. Um, yeah, well, sure. And so I think that having one of these 
heavy duty display cases in here would make it kind of difficult. Like we're already having issues with Mr. Sutton there. We need to be able to move him so she can get to the whole other thing of we have to get professional movers to shift him six inches basically. Mm -hmm. um, having permanent things in here that aren't moving make it really hard to use the space as we love using it. Okay. Um, for the display cases, the idea was one down in the lobby because we're utilizing that space right now, which has kind of been a really exciting thing to add that space to the library that's always been just a dead zone before. The idea is we have so many people coming in and out of there to use that space and have never even noticed it before. We had put one down there and we're also figuring out how to change the lights that you need like three things to do, but we're working mm -hmm. on that. Um, and then the other two, there'd be one in each branch um, in the middle. I mean, not not hiding in a corner, pretty obvious. Probably one of the ones that are, I would think like 360 degrees, you can see from any side. And then at the senior center in, um, and at City Hall, permanent fixtures there. I think that here in the Sutton room, it would be kind of, I don't want to, we wouldn't want to clutter it here, I don't think. No, I, I, I agree. That's why I was asking yeah. to clarify. But if you were to do something here or in this building, um, and if you're looking to have something custom, these are all custom. Uh, we did have the this cabinet here. This way we had that specially made. Yeah. And I'm sure that we could trace whoever, if yeah. you wanted them for continuity. Uh, and we know that it's a uh, fine piece of furniture. It's been there for our fine display case. It's been there for a while. It seems to be standing. So whoever uh, did that, I made this case now years ago. Uh, we might want to might, might consider that. And I understand that you don't want to clutter up the room. Uh, but if any of those could be the things that you only wanted to display under certain times that perhaps were on wheels, I don't mean a Mickey Mouse thing like pushing your car through the supermarket, but some nice piece of furniture. That could, I know there's an Angie room over there where they could be wheeled out just for a kid, not for when you have the graduation thing for the, but when you have a special thing or some special person is coming, that you could wheel that out here. And if you want to keep continuity, that was it. But I'm thrilled that someone is getting to that. And uh, uh, if I, I think we already talked about it, but I'd love to get together with you sometimes with some of the things that have happened before and some of the things of the, of the historical. You certainly may well know more than I do now, but there was a time when I watched them. George and I used to have coffee. It's a long time. <laughs> but uh, sometimes I'd like to sit down. Thank you for your input. Thanks, Don. Uh, Peter? So I was just thinking about these, these displays, and I'm not sure what you had in mind or what you're going to put in them. Um, I'm not sure even, obviously, what's in the collection, if there's newspapers or books or articles. Or, um, and the first thing that came to my mind to make those displays even more enticing and interesting for folks is, you know, items of the month. I don't know if it's going to be a monthly thing or quarterly thing, but items that have historical significance to current day, you know, um, to, like what happened 40 or 50 years ago, or 150 years ago, that month. Um, not just, oh, take things randomly off the shelf, you know, I think that'll probably really, people will be shocked to even realize that the city had that in its possession. Um, so Tom was talking about the things that he said are in the state. I, I was like my resident of the city. I didn't realize we had things that were that significant, so we had them locked up. And those are the kind of things hopefully people will get to see, but how do you get them out of the state safely? Hmm. Uh, you know? Fun planning, you know, displays. Yeah. I'm sure you'll have a lot of opportunities. Hmm. My interest in that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that, um, that we have somebody of this caliber. Thank you so much. Yeah, me too. Who knows you? There's, there's one thing that um, I just want to ask. And I heard on the furniture that you're looking for is a librarian's desk for this room. And you said opening up this room. So I envision this would be your office, right? Hmm. It's a little bit funny, but at the same time, you'll be in this room keeping the security and also being the professional who's able to find material for somebody. Um, it, this room gets closed up so often. Um, and, and it's one of the, I think one of the best kept secrets in the city of Peabody. Mm -hmm. You walk in here, you step back 200 years, right? Um, when we come in here for, for the uh, George Peabody Medal Awards, um, first time politicians, elected officials come in here and they're amazed at this room that we have, right? So it's, it's especially exciting for me and it, it's not just me, but I think it's gonna be for a lot of people to have more access to a room like this in Peabody. And I think that's a terrific direction that you're 
basically. And one thing I forgot to mention in the partnerships is that the um, Daryl McCarthy thought of us, but the um, school department has monthly leadership meetings of all the um, superintendent Vidala and all the principals for all the different schools. And they have monthly meetings, and I guess they used to happen in Higgins, and they were faced with a space crunch this year, so she contacted us, and now they've been having the meetings once a month here in the sunroom. Um, and they, the first one they had in the tech lab, because Catherine was finishing up in here, and then they had the first one last month, and they have another one on Thursday, by the way. Um, and it's 25 school administrators in the city, and none of them, maybe five of them, had ever been in here before. And just being able to open up the room and be so proud of it again. Not that we weren't proud of it before, but Catherine's done so much amazing work in, in cleaning it and organizing it and making it make sense um, and making it a welcome space again, that being able to open it to school administrators once a month is kind of an amazing thing to be able to do again. So she's been doing a fantastic job. And thank you. Um, I know there are the, these great um, online re research databases, historical materials and such. And is our, our collection included in some of that? Like, I want to say OCLC, but, you know, my sister used to work at the, at the Athenaeum in Boston and looking at their databases, the research databases. And somebody can go online and search for anything. And would they be directed, depending on what they were looking for, might they be directed to something in our collection? As far as I know, I don't think so. And that's one of the things I want to do is make sure that if someone looks at something, they say, oh, well, there's only five copies of this very important historical book. Where are they? Right. Then, you know, they would be able to say, oh, I can put Peabody and it's there and look at all of this other stuff they have. So, yeah, you're right. That's something that I'm looking forward to doing. And we, we had a short conversation about this, but um, Eric Bauer, previous person archivist, every fall had a um, Salem State history graduate student who would come in intern for him and do that kind of more um, cataloging and organizing thing. Um, so I think that would be that kind of a project, cataloging these books and organizing things are something that be better, a better use of an intern's time right. than Catherine's right. time. Or so, you have to get a grant yeah. to pay for that. Yeah, so um, there are, we talked about getting an intern to help her with the more, did we talk about this or is this just in my head? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I just did. You're busy. Year. You're busy. Yeah. Um, we talk about interns to do that more kind of just like rote, repetitive scanning of things. Because Catherine did a lot of um, organizing of these books and scanning things and walking around with the barcode scanner um, to figure out where things were and to just physically organize the collection that probably was way below her pay grade. Um, but it looks beautiful. So. <laughs> Bravo. It well, looks, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Work in progress, so I hope the next time it's already so beautiful. So um, glad. Much better. Just, so just glad one quick that. brainstorm. You mentioned Peabody schools. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about history here. Um, I'm not aware, and just because I'm not in, in understanding of all the things that are done in the school system, but do we have a Peabody history class? I don't think so. You know, and I'm just thinking if we want, do we do, we do have something? Oh, yeah? Oh, we, yeah. we do. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I am overstepping my bounds. Oh, I'm nice. Bounds I can't and exciting. <laughs> okay, I was just Here's looking one. at maybe some synergy yeah. in history of Essex um, County. Things that we oh, are. All right. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a tough year for the yeah. elective, but yeah. Thank you. I didn't even. Yeah. Well, Yanni can take it now. <laughs> <laughs> Set him up. And oh, one of the so Catherine also know. had um, took the old uh, policy sudden use sudden use policy, which was the one I've given you is the new one, which is basically welcoming people in and explaining to them how to use the space safely and correctly. The old policy, which I did not give you copies of, is very um, unwelcoming, and if you read it, I think people more. I, I can imagine a person saying, "I want to do some history in the, you know, some research on, you know, my family's land records from Danvers in the 1600s, or whatever, in the Sutton Room," and then reading the policy just would kind of scare people off. Um, she took all of 
the same principles and the same rules, basically, who wrote it to be a more welcoming doc that actually feels like you are welcome to the system. There are rules to follow still with guidelines, but so don't you know lick things, but you are welcome to use it. Um, so if you wanted to give that a quick read and then approve that tonight, sure. and then if we can talk about a basic um, approval that the things that she's looking to spend money on would be would fall into the Brattle Trust rules, and then she can move forward with getting quotes on things. And then we would come to you for approval um, for actual every purchase when she would get quotes, and we would figure out what, how much things are going to cost. Do we actually need to give any approval um, for her to do the research on the prices? I don't think we do. I think that there are some things that I think I personally at least would like to know that you're okay with us spending the Brattle Book Trust on it so we can move forward versus things that would have to be put aside and be sold for grant funding for it or outside funding. Yeah, good idea. Um, so Kate, I misunderstood that last part. Yeah. So you're asking us to say, yes, we want you to further look into this, which will cost some money. I, I'm looking for you to say, yes, these things for, to our understanding fall under the, the limits of the Brattle Book Trust. And it's something that from our understanding, could be purchased using this trust fund to go forth and get closed. Yeah. Okay. okay. So as far as this policy that goes, though, I have a few things. So are we going to, we have to vote on this tonight? The we actual do. policy? Because there's a couple of things that- We'll have a discussion. We can have a discussion and then yeah. edit things okay. if necessary. Yeah. Okay. So would you like us to make a move? Oh, sorry, no, Catherine. Um, sure. 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 Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Well, you can stay there since you'll probably have to answer questions about this. I don't. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be. Stay on camera. You're stuck now. Stay. <laughs> I just want to warn everybody that he's 35. I, yeah. I'm keeping I know. an eye on time, okay. everybody, and I apologize for further meeting, but this is a very interesting. It is. I just don't want us to miss anything. Okay. So, would you like us to make a motion? Um, so that was um, that was our our new business, right? And. Under, um, I guess, resolution, we can start making some motions. Is that where we make the motions? Well, a motion for Dr. Brattle or for us to have Catherine, make a motion for Catherine to investigate the uh, options for furniture for the use of the historical collection. Second. Well, okay, well, I got to jump in here. Yeah. It wasn't just furniture. It window was dressings. Oh, window, right, window right. dressings, Bookshelf. HVAC systems. Yeah. Getting quotes for, for right, furniture. Right. That's, I, I think we should go over all Yeah, so it's here. furniture for use in the room. It is Hearing furniture room. for properly displaying our works. And it is. Um, Librarian's desk. Well, that's furniture for furniture. use. Um, it is uh, shelf repair. Refinishing of what refinishing where necessary and then window dressing. So there's five things. Right. And the HVAC also is part the, of the the HVAC I think um, is gonna be um separate. Yeah, the HVAC is separate. The MBLC has LSTA funded, so federally funded preservation grants specifically. So let's do that. That's a good yeah, point. That, I think that getting a separate HVAC system yeah. which is needed is gonna be super expensive and complicated. Yeah. And Catherine and I don't know what we're doing. Did you get all that? Yeah. It's down yeah. the line. We could learn, but like that the the preservation grant people for the state um, work very close. I've seen like the serves about this thing work very closely when they get involved in other grants. It, it, it kind of takes money to do your own thing, but what I understand, the preservation grant people work very hand in hand and closely with the organizations they give the money to. So I okay. sense that you would be very well guided and helped during that process. So I second Stephanie's I motion for I that. Amend my motion, Let's if like. amend it, please. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll amend my motion to include um, giving. Catherine and Kate from you know permission to investigate and get quotes on window coverings and treatments, um, repairing broken bookshelves and doing wood refinishing, um, looking at furniture pieces that uh, meet the needs of this room and displays at other venues, art and art hanging stuff. And Stuff. <laughs> art hanging, material hanging. Stuff, no, the art and hanging materials would not be in here because that would be right. fine. But out in the tech lab, especially, right. Right. Um, we have art like nailed to the wall right now. We're yeah. looking into one of those um, invisible systems where you have the rail along the yeah. top of the yeah. wires hanging down. And that would allow, we do have art hiding back here that is not displayed. And Catherine also suggested things that we could take high quality scans of and display that out there as well to kind of extend the Sutton room outside of its actual right. doors. So we have to make a motion 
and then everybody yeah. can talk. Okay. So that, so that, did you get that, Sarah? Sorry, it was kind of <laughs> mishmash, but and and including material, um, art, display materials. Okay. Second. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> and now discussion. Any discussion? Sure. I'll go. I, oh, go ahead. Ann, please go ahead. Can you speak up, Ann? Handling special collections. There's no mention of using white gloves. Um, we're, 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 final gloves. Does this have to do with the motion? We're, we're in a motion. We're, we're having a but motion. It's a different subject. That's a yeah. different subject. Handling. Handling. All right. Uh, although we, we do look, I have a question. Okay, we, let's finish. We oh, just the motion. Motion. Right right motion. Right 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 and you're investigating of products, and you go out looking. Is uh, I'm assuming everything's going to be on wheels and movable, and be able to fit off that door, so that we need to shift that yeah. everything you look at is is very full and yeah. easily absolutely right. out, out of yeah. the room for when you have those tight events that yeah. you have to get everything out. Yeah. This, this sounds like you've got it all covered in your motion. So we, we need a, a vote here. Yeah, and there's a discussion and there was no discussion here. And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Did you vote, Don, for aye? Okay. Yeah. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Can I answer that question? It said vinyl gloves. That's what they use. Yeah. Right. So next, um, I'm sorry, there's another motion no, here. Also, we are trying to look at this yeah. Sutton Room usage policy and to prove that this evening. Let's take a quick read at that. And okay, that's. Did somebody make a motion? That's what we want. Well, I can make. Well, 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 well Ian has a question here. Um, we're, we're making. Is it regarding here. a motion? It's regarding the policy. All right, let's have a discussion after the motion is I made. I just have a question about not having any limitations on handling materials without coverings. Cotton, white cotton gloves. I think I, if I understand corrected, I see yeah, researchers so, are strongly encouraged to wash and dry their hands prior to handling rare books or archival okay. materials. I think it's covered. I, I don't um, know. I don't know. I and I, 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 I'm not sure about the science here, but I was told, I was given um, uh, one of the Sutton's letters to hold, and I was like, I didn't want to touch it. And I was told that you can touch this with your bare hands because the oils in your hands actually help preserve these materials. That's what I was told. I don't know if that's true. So, to so that's, that's, point, that's our, point. Our, our, our there's vinyl gloves in there, though. Unless so I'm for, for leather book bindings, uh, clean, dry hands, um, and like the natural oils on your hands are actually good for book binding. Um, for letters, um, so regular paper. Um, clean, dry hands are the best way to go um, because so any cool. uh, fibers might snag and cause tears on the press. So that's why most uh, facilities and institutions don't use okay. cotton right. anymore. Um, and then the, the vinyl gloves are for handling photographs so you don't get Fingerprints. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. gloves is not that's old technology. Vinyl, vinyl, gloves. I guess. Exactly. vinyl gloves is right here. All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I didn't see that. A motion to accept this. No, no, I, I, excuse me. No, I, I no? Have, no, I have another point. Sorry. Go ahead. I know we're rushing, but I so I have a, a question about drinks because we're all in here with water. And I, it seems as though we're not supposed to really be in here with water, that, it, that it's supposed to be left. They want it to be left. All visitors are left to leave their personal belonging outside of this room. Is that what you mean by a secure area? So um, one of the furniture items that I will be investigating is um, a coat rack and a cubby. Um, so people can have uh, drinks with lids. Uh, on that side away from any materials okay. um, because we still want people to be able to come and use the stuff but we don't want any materials out while they're okay. out so okay so i'm thinking more like what about meetings like when you have when you have meetings um like you know when the leadership meetings come do you are we all allowed to come in with coffee water or whatever and without restriction on that with lids with lids that's been our the rule that we and used. what about food I'm talking about any food, snacks, no, no, no. beverages. No. I read. No. Okay. 
So I would well, say. What if you were to have a nice little reception and it had nothing to do with access to the materials, but you would just want it to use the room as space. So what we've done before and the, the, the goal we've been doing, when we were talking about for birds and bubbly, for example, with yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've done other events in here where people have been able to come in the room. Like I did a teen um, back in the day. I did a teen murder mystery here, and murder mystery is in here, and the food and the pizza was all over there. Yeah. Um, so because we have that space and the idea is with this art material as well, you kind of extend the sun room beyond its doorway. You can have materials out there so that it doesn't stop at the door, but there's a clear place for the food and the drink. Um, it's a clear place to come and look at the free stuff. So could we add no food? Or something. No, Do we I thought it was that? in there already. There, there was an event that I was invited to here. Um, I forget what the organization was, but there was a um, a tea party. They had a meeting with tea in um, expensive China, and it was in this room. So I don't know. You're saying that that won't be able to happen? Yeah, I've been to a couple of small things like that. I think too. they have been there, right? So, so, okay, it's just want to point it's it out. Easy history, and I can see the table there. The cake. Some yeah, we had yeah. people cutting up cake. Uh, I'm not I think this is more public. public. Certainly, if there are things out, that should not be. But if you're, I, my feeling purely uh, personally is that if you're having something specifically to honor somebody or for some special occasion where there is. Uh, none of the, it's not for the artifacts, it's just for come have a piece of cake in a beautiful room. And then and while they're in here, then if a couple of trustees are here, we can push the room. You know, but uh, I don't personally have a problem with cake and lids and stuff, but that shouldn't be if anything is out on the floor. I think this is like speaking to like this research. Is, yes, this right. is specifically <laughs> speaking to like, we don't have our drinks with us with materials out right now. We're not only right, right, materials. Right. This is specifically, if I'm not, if I'm correct, talking about when Catherine's in here showing people things and doing research with people um, under that kind of a circumstance. Right. I think okay. that the debate of having food and drink in here during special events is another debate to have. Right. Which right. Me and I didn't know if it was all right. encompassing. That's why I was kind of getting at that. But this is really focused on her visitors. Yes. For doing research. research. So I'm comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I think it was more other things I was okay. wondering about. Right. It's too good to waste. But sorry. Be careful. So do we have a motion? A motion to accept. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, any further discussion? Uh, well, I just following up what you said. Do we want to, to include this to say that this is usage policy or research? It says it right on. Well, it says it right in the first sentence, right under it. It says. Welcome visitors. Conduct a regional local yes. history. Yes. So that's and, and so it's yeah, it's specific to that. And so we may need to have some other document for other usage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Uh, do we have any further motions? I didn't see much for requests and motions on your report, Director. No, no, those are. I think it's the first time. All right. I um, agreed to everything already. Gotten what I wanted. You're so good. <laughs> All right, that was unfinished business. Uh, new business. I'm sorry. Um, resolution. Anything for resolution? We have to talk about the our dinner. Next month. Oh, thank you for bringing that up, Stephanie. Um, so uh, a number of you have contacted me um, regarding um, it would be okay if we didn't meet this year. They'd be okay with it. Uh, and I and I said that I will bring it up to the meeting in, in a meeting to get an idea how people feel about um, actually having a dinner this year or not having a dinner this year. Um, I, I think um, that. We're still in this pandemic period. Um, there, there are folks that you know are concerned because the real good concerns are they have children, they have elderly parents, um, they want to limit their exposure, um, or they have grandchildren and they want to limit exposure. So, a lot of times, folks I find um, are uh, less risky, um, more safe in the way they they conduct themselves socially going out. 
And I think that um, there's, there's cases of that everywhere. You still see it. Um, people aren't going out. And there's cases where a lot of people are still going out. Um, so I just want to ask this board, um, who, who would still be interested uh, in going to dinner, having our annual dinner? And I want to ask the board also if um, people are OK with not having the dinner and any, any comments on that. You can go around the table, start with you, Rick. Um, I say no to the dinner. Let's just have a regular meeting because of the special circumstance. And I think we should have a dinner and a push meeting beforehand, like we always did. John? I would agree uh, with Rick that uh, we should not have a dinner. I did want to throw one of the caveats out. If we wanted to have something here, Second room now after that, but uh, out, of the, out of room, and we wanted to bring our, our hype order in. I cater have something catered from Sue Chang's or something here, where at least we know everyone was here. We were wearing a mask, except when we're eating. I could live with that, but I could easily live with no just. And I will uh, not. I don't think it's fair to other people to go out with dinner. I think other people. So I would not vote for that. I agree with that amendment. <clears throat> Peter, it's not going to be here. Oh well, no, no, man! I mean, just yeah. smelly and okay. Uh, let's go out. I, I wouldn't mind uh, going out. Say again. So I, it, I think I, I want to try to get back to normal. You know. Right. Um, so I mean, the idea of going back to a special occasion dinner for the holidays, I think, would be nice. So that's a yes from you. Yeah. Okay. Stephanie. I mean, our other trustees here. <laughs> I am totally flexible. I, I, you know, I, I understand, and I hate to be wishy-washy, but I understand both sides of it. I personally am comfortable going out. I don't want to put anyone else under duress to feel, you know, bad or, you know, about it. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay with, I, I don't know about bringing food in, honestly, we're all going to be squeezed into the trustee room, I assume, right? If we had to do something like that. The tech lab. The tech lab. Yeah. yeah that, that's okay too. If, if, I know. Is that okay to bring food out in there, Kate? In tech lab is fine. Yeah, is fine. Are you We've done it before. That? I mean, I, I. I know you're not. Personally, I'm not. Yeah. I, I had to do like yeah. a comfort level and like right too little and yeah. Um, I. I personally, Al is out of town in December, in early December. Um, I probably, if it was decided to have something here catered, I would still attend, but not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Go like run away and eat in my office. Right. 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 I'm not ready to live normally yet. Yeah. I'm not able to in my life yet. Right. 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 Um, that's just my personal thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just inclined to have a brief meeting. So that's a no. And so. And you know what? The other thing is, and it's I know it's not formal, but if if folks wanted to go out after just more casually, and just whoever wanted to go could go as as a non trustee meeting group, you know, if that. Can I ask a question you guys are talking about? Please, you'd like to go out to eat normal. I've been out to eat a hundred times in the last six yeah. months. So I yeah. mean, yeah. it's not a big deal for me. Right. I just don't think it's going to work for this. Right. Exactly. That's exactly. I, I feel the same way. Because I, th I think everyone's comfort level is different. You're really not going to be able to match it with this group. So that, and that's fine. Totally fine. So I guess no. I mean, so, could I suggest that please. maybe instead of a holiday thing, we maybe do something in June before we break for the summer. Um, at that point, we'd have the trustees on board. Hopefully life will be normal-er. Yeah. Um, it better be. <laughs> um, but at least that's kind of a celebration of the end of the fiscal year, sure. the budget, hooray. Sure. And then there's less pressure and it's less making people uncomfortable. Yeah. It's anything but traditional. So I, I think that your suggestion is a good one that we, we're not going to lose sight of getting together and having some. Yeah. I think there. that's a great idea. Yeah. So like that your too. nose aren't permanent. They're just going to be um, shifting the event to something. Yeah. Because I, I still, I, I've only been to one of the parties and it was when I was in our, kind of seems like 80 million years ago. I know. It was <laughs> fun. <laughs> and I loved it. It was a great Great. I have the picture of the four library directors. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, was, it was really fun, and I would love to do that. I just, I feel like for me personally and for other people, it's not quite like, so close. Um, so if we could push it to June, it becomes a celebration of the end of the fiscal year. We made it through another year. Right. We're celebrating a good budget, right? Right. That's right. Right. And then 
life is more back to normal and nobody ideally knock on wood is uncomfortable right. and it's a last hurrah before we all break for three months and go do fun things over the summer right. it's kind of that's a go along with that. okay. that's why we hired you if you had a great so, idea <laughs> i want i want to do this because i want some teaching i don't want to miss out on this i just don't want to do it now don don you have something to say just throw one more thing in in favor of the concept of uh in june or whatever uh there might be a possibility if, since it's not going to be a board meeting we can have it any day of the week we could have it at four o'clock on Saturday afternoon outside for the restaurants that serve outside. And there are well, some that may be in serving food outside. Yeah. So that's just one more option. Plenty, exactly. Plenty of time to okay. figure so, it out. Okay. So we'll have a regular meeting. Is that what we're saying? On the we'll, we'll, we'll have um, a regular meeting. Um, December 6th. Yeah, it's 7 p.m. December 6th. Hang on. That's the sex over charge. Okay. I just put it in my phone. Let's just double check that. Ladies, I hope we didn't scare I you. I know. Thank <laughs> 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 you. In June. In June. In June. June. Because we had a good presentation. I, I, I like to run a meeting under an hour. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the record is, I think, 27 minutes. Oh, no, <laughs> There's one of our Zoom meetings. Well, we're taking it to the at 8 o'clock. Right. So um, our next meeting our next meeting is going to be on Monday, um, December 6th. Yep. And then in January, um, January 3rd is the inauguration. Hooray. Exactly. And then, yes. So then we'll be meeting yeah. on Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. And Jennifer and Chucky suggested to me that we post somewhere, which is a great idea, our a schedule of our meetings going forward, yeah. which had never heard to me before. So um, I'm going to go ahead and publish and add on the citylibrary.org slash about us is where the trustees are listed yeah. in all of our previous minutes. And I'm going to add on there a little basic schedule of like our Be, Before we do that, can, can, um, can we have the meeting schedule brought to the board so we can approve it for the year? Sure. I'd rather do that because sometimes sure. we have conflicts and I want to make sure that everything's okay. going to be okay. Yeah, we'll all check it out. And then we'll approve it and amend it as, as necessary during the year if things come up. Yeah. And don't forget to look at Catherine's group. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw the displays. Yeah. Okay, so let's okay. It's so can we so can we let's get so we have the next uh, meeting here and um, any matter suggested by a trustee to library director prior to the issuance of the agenda. Notice that's number nine. Nothing there. Number 10, any matter suggested by any person in writing to the library director prior to the issuance of the notice and agenda of the meeting containing a title description of the agenda item. And we have none of that here. So we are done with the agenda. Do I have, uh, actually, do we want, did you have to say something, Anna? Don't mean to be rude. No. Okay, anybody? No. Nope. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All Discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. And uh, welcome. Welcome to the trustees. I hope that was.